I don't understand a lot of the decisions they make on these East West DVDs. Like here, they renamed Dingo's Puss in Boots, The Cat on Boots. It's just a cat lying on top of boots, I guess. <laughs> The Puss in Boots tale is in the public domain, so there was absolutely no reason for them to rename this the Cat on Boots whatsoever. Man, I can't wait to rip apart another Dingo Pictures movie! I hate these so much! False. I don't feel like I should really have to say that, but I guess I do. I keep reviewing these things because I actually enjoy doing so. I mean, of course we all know that the quality of these dingo movies is quite poor. That's really not the point of covering these things anymore. It's the journey we take in discovering how ridiculous each dingo adaptation has turned out, and maybe having a few mildly sensible chuckles along the way. But did you know that the cat on boots was a metaphor for the condition of the human spirit? Yeah, that's right. I read about that in a book you might have heard of called the Bible. Just kidding. I read about it in Garfield's insults, put downs, and slams. Eh, are you alright? I don't know. Well, that was a weird intro, but I guess that's what you get when I have to clarify that I don't hate everything I cover, even if it's not very good technically. Speaking of a technical nightmare, the copy of the movie on the East West DVD is of course complete garbage with play buttons, poor deinterlacing, video glitches in the picture, and it's really desaturated. So, once again, I've slapped the English voice track onto a copy from a Finnish DVD so we can see how poor this movie looks more clearly. And yeah, even though I have a German DVD of this, I still used a copy from Finland because it looked better. This German DVD is streets ahead of the East-West DVD, but it still looks like a VHS rip, just one from a better master and not as executed as ineptly. Cover talk time! Look at the silly old wizard on the side here kind of pointing at the cat like, Hey, it's that guy! He kind of makes me think the Cookie Crisp wizard, which might explain the community reference I just did. This wizard in a more accurate to the movie form appears on the back of the German DVD where I guess he's cooking himself for dinner? The front of my German DVD also has the good old Charlie Cat from Dingo on there, but for some reason there's two other versions of this same cover. On these, they've redrawn the entire thing and replaced Charlie with a gray cat, and one of these is slightly more detailed than the other. Oh, and there's also a German version that uses the East-West cover. And that's a highly useful piece of Dingo trivia that you'll keep in your mind for the next Five seconds, I'm sure. <laughs> If there's one thing Dingo knows, it's how to grab your attention right from the beginning. Oh, well, there comes another one. There's just no end to the work. Why does he speak so slowly? Gee, I sound like my comment section. Hey, Farmer. It's been a good year. Oh, his name is just Farmer, is it? He must be secretly played by Jason Statham. We needed this badly. For three weeks, we've been eating leek soup. Or he's voiced by a woman, because Dingo apparently loves having big men voiced by women for some reason. I assume at this point most of the roles in these things are pulled from a hat. Can you grind this for me? At home, we're already heated our oven. We're already heated our oven. It's a wonderful reason to get old men to grind for you. It's just too much work for me. It's time for me to retire. I won't live much longer anyway. But father, you live to be a hundred years old. No, no, Hans, no, I don't fool myself. Come for the old man talking about his upcoming death, but stay for the cat on boots at some point. This old man dying pleases Charlie Cat, who of course is going to end up being the titular cat on boots, and he still has a piece of white cat butt following him. Ah! I broke my foot! It's not much that I have to leave you, but I hope you'll make the best of it. As you as my eldest son will get the middle. The mill? 
Yup. No one seems to know how they feel about anything. Yup. As the second eldest, you will get the donkey. Wait, so one son gets a mill and the other just gets a donkey? Not very even here, old man. <laughs> Yay! He didn't mean me. Shit. And as for you, Hans, I unfortunately have only our tomcat to give. Ugh, oh, even the cat knows that it's a crappy inheritance. At least he knows his lack of value. I said no fighting. Now get back to work. The farmer needs his gorn. Yeah. The farmer needs his gorn? Yeah. <laughs> Your garbage father leaving you a cat as your inheritance sure is wacky. It's all very well that you follow me around, but what can I do with you, dumb old tomcat? Maybe make a fur hat out of you, that's all. <laughs> you... Yuck it up, fuzzball. Your days are numbered. Hmm, well, actually, one can feel sorry for him. He was always pretty decent to me. He just threatened to make you into a hat. What is your problem, cat? Just then, not John Smith and Charles walk in from another dimension. Don't look so disappointed, Hans. I'll see to it that you don't starve. I think I've gone crazy. Did I just think that that cat spoke to me? I think this is the first dingo movie where the animals talking to humans has been acknowledged as being slightly weird. Next thing I'll be seeing white mice. Yeah, no one's heard of a white mouse before. Rubbish. Stay where you are, it's true, I can talk. Sure, I talk with a female voice, but I'm supposedly a tomcat, so I'm a boy, I guess. I can talk, and a couple other nice things too, hmm? <laughs> Please tell me the cat did not just infer that it could grant sexual favors. All I need is a sack and a pair of boots. Then I can be seen in public uh -huh. if you can get uh -huh. them for me. Was the cat invisible without boots in a sack? Or maybe we're just saying that all cats that go out without boots are just really not decent. Anything else? <laughs> I'm guessing that line was supposed to be said a little sassy instead of it angering the cat that he just legit wondered if it wanted anything else. If I'm going to be crazy, then I may as well do it right. I didn't realize there were incorrect ways of being crazy, but I suppose getting your cat boots is how you do it right. Someone over at Dingo apparently figured out how to do iris transitions while making their puss in boots, so almost every scene in this begins and ends with an iris in and out. So Hans, take off your slippers. I need to measure you. No, no, the boots aren't for me. It's my cat that wants them. <laughs> <laughs> now that the cat is on boots, that makes him bipedal instead of a quadruped. Cause those boots were made for walking or something I don't know. Quite unusual. Like a puss in boots. You know, that'd be a great name for this story. Not as good as the cat on boots. <laughs> Look at Hans's stupid small hands. What an idiot. Now that the cat on boots has his boots and a sack, he can be seen in public. So he goes out into the middle of the wilderness so he can kill Thumper. Yes, really. This surprises Bambi, but not enough to do anything about it. Such stunning animation. I don't know how they pulled it off. And I guess that shows Thumper for laughing at Mr. Cat on Boots earlier, because now they're super dead. And just like in the original Puss in Boots story, the Cat on Boots is going to gift the dead rabbit to a king to earn favor for his master. No, it's a, it's a cat. A Puss in Boots. Guys, stop saying that. This is the Cat on Boots. It's completely different. Let me in. I must see the king immediately. Away with you! Oh, apparently the talking cat doesn't surprise the dimwit guards as much as it did Hans. They're just kind of annoyed by him. You will be fired immediately if the king finds out that you stopped me seeing him. I have a present for him. But okay, go on in. <sighs> well, those guards probably should be fired if that's all it takes to get by them. I want to see the king. I have a present for him. Is it that bomb? Uh, no. It's a uh, something else. Okay, go on in. Mr. 
Mr. King. Mr. King. Mr. King. So is King his last name? He's King King? Not now, not now. I'm clearly busy standing here. Now, I don't know how Dingo managed this one, but out of all of their human characters, this King just looks extremely fake, like he's a toy come to life or some kind of mannequin. My lord, the Earl ordered me to present your majesty with a present. Sheesh! Earl? A rabbit! A beautiful dead rat! I love death! Oh, we might be kindred spirits, you and I. My hunters haven't been able to bring me one for weeks. This must be kingdom incompetence King King runs here. Oh good, it's this guy again with his never-ending pancakes. Pancakes! No. And this time the stupid chef is apparently burning something in the background. But it's okay because the smoke's frozen. But wait a second, he's wearing sandals? Is that really good for in the kitchen? Another brilliant hire, King King. Get out! Wait, cook. This pretty cat had brought the king that rabbit. I would also like him to move on because he's losing hair. Who's losing hair? I don't know if you should really be messing with that demon cat on boots. Also, why is this table at cat level? Well, am I going to get anything to eat or not? How could the signore like his mouse, a boiled or fried, huh? This guy is cooking mice? Damn it, King King! That looks quite tasty there. Oh yeah, sure. I think that's Janice's family. And suppose I'm supposed to serve you on a golden platter, huh? One a day I'm gonna kill this cat and serve him to Mr. Crunchybone for lunch. <laughs> I must have been totally crazy spending my last money on a pair of boots. Cat boots? No arguments here, but at least you did crazy right. The cat on boots came back the very next day. The cat came back. Hans thought he was a gunner, but the cat came back with gold and told Hans he told the king his title was Earl. Sounds better, no? Me and an Earl? I hope he never meets me. Yeah, that feeling is probably shared with most. Oh wow, a new dingo animal. It's apparently a partridge in a dead tree. It honestly surprises me at this point not just to see the lion and the king bird recolored again. But of course, that bird is in this too, and it has a sinister plan to do absolutely nothing. The partridge follows its nose to the sweet taste of death as the cat on Boots's giant head devours it, trap and all. At least that's what the not changing the background sure makes it look like. He actually kept his word. Hmm, looks cute, a puss in boots. Man, I get the feeling this wasn't meant to be called the cat on boots at all. And hey, look, the princess is another modification of the woman character model that Dingo loves reusing. It's pretty much their blonde Anastasia, but she looks a bit worse. Mm, I'm curious to know what he has brought me this time. Maybe it's a spell to make me into a real boy. Mm, good day, lovely child. You don't look like your father at all. Rude. But true, she doesn't look like a life-size doll like him. Well, at least this partridge is apparently really happy about dying. That makes it cool. I tell ya, this awkward flip back and forth movement sure isn't helping with the fakeness of King King. Chuck! At your service, your majesty. At your service, your majesty. Oh, that cat on boots has some truly witty banter. Like me, shredded! <laughs> I don't think I want to know why this guy's coattails are that stiff. <laughs> Must be a strange girl to have a puss in boots as a servant. No, oh, why not? A cat would be a step up from the morons that I hire. King King must be getting a little tired of pancakes at this point. Maybe that's why he needs a cat to hunt for him. Aw, the king and the princess want to go for a ride. Hmm, this could be the opportunity. Uh, better watch out, Wooshel, or you'll be next on the cat on boots hit list. 
A hole in the sock, some sick detail there, dingo. But why? Oh man, don't ask such stupid questions. We must go to the lake now. Do we really have to? I'm quite content to laze around doing nothing the entire movie. So Cat on Boots is gonna set it up that Earl Hans got robbed so that it's more believable that this doofus is an Earl to King King and Princess Princess. Which is another wonderful beat from the original tale of our trickster hero. But what's really important is this dock. <laughs> yeah! Don't forget that! Oh, and almost as important as that duck is the fact that Hans has no nipples, so he's like some kind of android or something. So many phonies in this movie. Let the devil take me, it's that cat in boots again. Uh, I guess the angry driver was the only character briefed on the silly title change. My master was bathing in the lake, and a thief came and stole all his clothes. If he stays in there much longer, he will catch a cold or maybe die. <laughs> That's all there is. Sounds like a whole load of not my problem. What's the matter, me? <laughs> Drive back to the palace and fetch new clothes for the Earl. Damn it. Damn it, why do I have to do my job? I suck at it. Crabster coach driver at least changed it up a bit with damn it instead of a straight damn. Come, my daughter, let's go and greet the Earl. King King seems awfully excited to see Naked Earl. Where is the Earl, your master? I can't see him. I want to see how he measures up. That idiot, I hope he hasn't run away. I love helping that idiot. Brr, your servant packed the clothes together. If they don't fit, it's not my fault. Seriously, why does everyone in King King's employ just walk over him? Take the clothes to your master so that I can finally get to meet him. I'm really curious. I never thought he'd be so young and good looking. I thank you most profusely, my lord king, that you've helped me in my need. Hmm, Hans is not so dumb after all. Yeah, look at him standing there and not falling over. Pretty impressive. Who does this lovely field belong to? The great magician. The king will soon ride by, and if you don't say that this field belongs to the earl, I'll kill you all. You gotta love stupid old stories where the hero can threaten to kill people if they don't lie for him. <gasps> the kitty cat death threat really shocks extra poorly drawn man and Aladdin's mother. The best the wizard says. After all, this cat is the most powerful being in the universe. Coachman, stop, stop. Bloody hell, now what's the problem? Oh, I just remembered that I could have you put to death. Who does this wonderful field belong to? Uh, the great Earl. Earl who? I don't know. Hey everyone, who does this big meadow belong to? The, 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 the meadow belongs to the great magician. The king will drive by soon, and if he asks who the meadow belongs to, you must answer the Earl. If you can't do that, I'll kill you all. Can you imagine a house cat walking up to you in boots, telling you to lie for it, or it will kill you, and you just saying, Oh yes, please, I'll do whatever you say, don't hurt me, Mr. Mr. Cat! Who does this meadow belong to, my good people? To the Earl, or that push in boots will kill us. The meadow belongs to the Lord Earl. It's so weird that today is the first day I've decided to ride around and randomly ask people who plots of land belong to. Over at the magician's Lago Castle. And yeah, Dingo has changed it from the shape-shifting ogre that is usually in Puss in Boots to this shape-shifting magician who apparently really loves his eyeshadow, but whatever floats his boat. Does the castle belong to the magician? Of course, you stupid cat. Everyone knows that. Get out of my way. I want to see the magician. Come on in. The Cat on Boots is really just the tale of the world plagued by horrible employees. I am the richest, most powerful man in the area. Exactly what I've heard. Which is why I've come to kill you. Yup. Really? What a hero, right? 
Oh man, this magician stole Jafar's silly bird. Or maybe it just hangs out with any old man that has powers. I was passing by your castle by chance and decided to use the opportunity to see such a rich and powerful man. Hmm, maybe Cat on Boots didn't actually come here to kill, but instead just wants to hit on this guy. You can change yourself into any animal you choose. Is that true? So we get quite the morph effect out of Dingo for the wizard's transformations into other familiar Dingo characters, and I like that his boiling pot transforms along with him. Child's play! My god! Help! <laughs> Did I frighten you, you silly cat? Well, those wind chimes overpowering the dialogue is what's frightening me. Can you change into something smaller than you like a tiny mouse? There's nothing that I can't do, you stupid cat. If this magician is so rich and powerful, you'd think you'd have better things to do than impress a stupid cat. You'd also think he'd be a little smarter than this. Must have inherited his wealth. Meow. <laughs> Doesn't taste bad for a magician. How many magicians have you eaten? Was this magician even a bad guy? I mean, all we really know was he owns some land that the boot cat decided it wanted people under the threat of death to lie about being owned by Hans instead. Sure, the magician was a little short with the cat, but still he was pretty accommodating to this jerkwad on boots bursting in and demanding they perform tricks for him. And yes, the puss in boots eating the ogre after tricking him into transforming into a mouse is part of the original tale, but that doesn't excuse this bit of silliness from mockery or criticism. Now come and admit it. Hi, it's your castle, isn't it? Um, well, um, I, I don't... Hans, you could say your castle is somewhere else, you idiot. Also, the cat probably should have let him in on Operation Steel Magician's castle. Welcome to the Earl's castle. I somehow knew you'd show up here and right about now. Luckily, I'm done my murders. That's how it goes. It's always the same. They're off to fill their bellies and the two of us can't get anything to... So did the cat murder all the rest of the staff at Magician Castle? Or did he just say he'll kill them all if they don't work for the bum he's installing as the new leader and everyone in the world is just really quick to give up to a cat? My daughter, you're not eating. Nor are you, my lord. The two of them are in love. They don't need to eat. <laughs> yeah, love is all you need. Damn, I'm hungry. Oh, so you two have my blessing. Let me bounce back and forth in an extremely unconvincing manner to accentuate how fake I look. You may take my daughter to wife and have half the kingdom as a wedding gift. Here's what I'd say if you weren't all so stupid. The kingdom is mine, bitch! <laughs> Oh, so that's why the king looks so fake. So there's a kind of funny edit on the English DVD version of this movie. It just fades out on Jester Chef here because I guess they wanted to cut out the next shot of the cat on boots smoking a cigar, which is the ending Dingo had intended. It's a good thing they cut that or all the kids would be imitating the cat on boots bad smoking habits. We don't want that, but they can follow his lying and murdering examples. That's okay. I learned it from watching you, cat on boots! I learned it from watching you! <laughs> False. That was an example of lying, which I learned from the cat on boots. As another way to copy another certain studio, Dingo Pictures has started to make live-action versions of all their anime classics. So allow me to welcome you to the world premiere of Dingo Pictures' live-action remake of The Cat on Boots.
else he expected. What's your opinion about? <laughs> uh, speaking of credit rolls, today's episode of Fail Us in the Movies is brought to you by Gord VPN. Gord VPN! It's a real VPN! And you can get a whole 10 cents off your next purchase of Gord VPN. At checkout, just put in the code FA-